This is the Dungeon of Nehelbuk, the Amulet of Chaos. Uh, two thes in one title is a little bit rough, but this uh, came out about two years ago now-ish, and uh, it just sort of passed me by. I didn't really notice it, and uh, considering it's a CRPG, a genre that I really enjoy, I decided I should go back and actually take a look at it, and the fact that it just recently came out on Game Pass in sort of like a Game of the Year edition style complete form gave me a good excuse to go back and try it out. Now, Nehelbuk is actually an established thing. It's not just uh, a title that the game made up. It's a French sort of audio show, like a, an audio comedy, basically, that parodies fantasy tropes and role-playing games and stuff like that. I don't know anything about it, not being French, but it has existed for a while, and this game is actually the first time that that sort of universe has actually been made into an English-speaking form of media, which is sort of an interesting idea because it's this relatively established concept that is just now getting a release in video game form. It kind of reminds me of The Dark Eye, how that's like a, a German tabletop role-playing thing, but uh, only fairly recently in the last like decade or so has more Dark Eye stuff actually been available for English speakers as well. So I do appreciate the idea of taking uh, normally very niche non-English speaking concepts like this and actually spreading the media around a little bit and getting more people to experience it. I always appreciate the idea of uh, being able to get interested in a new universe that I previously obviously didn't know about. It's kind of cool. But uh, what does this game do that makes it stand out from other CRPG offerings available? And uh, the main two ideas are, one, it's kind of a set adventure, and that you have a set list of characters to go down and a specific plot to go through, and each character already has their own personality and stuff, so you won't be creating your own character in this game, or a party of characters indeed. It's actually a very large party right from the beginning. You have like seven people with you from the start, so it is very much a party-based RPG that is is mostly about the interaction of the characters and not about any one singular one of them being yours. And of course, the other conceit that makes it a bit different is it doesn't take itself seriously at all. This is a very much a parody universe, so this is of course a parody RPG. Now whether or not you find that thing endearing or funny is very much up to you. I can't really comment on everyone's sense of humor. You know, humor is very subjective. For me, I found a lot of the dialogue kind of falls flat because a lot of it is based on a lot of jokes that I've heard before elsewhere. You know what I mean? A lot of like Terry Pratchett kind of stuff, and as much as I love Terry Pratchett novels, I appreciate them in their original context and that sort of style of humor elsewhere can sometimes feel like it's being a little bit too self-referential and self-aware in a way that kind of loses the funny for me. Although I don't find very many of the characters funny, I do admit that I do like the wizardess and the dwarf. I think they're actually both pretty funny and very well voice acted. The voice acting in this game is very much a mixed bag. There are some characters with really bad voice acting, but it's the kind of bad that I think is on purpose. It's like that B-movie silly voice acting. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be kind of not great. But for me, it's the characters that are like the straight men, the, the serious characters that are not trying to be funny all the time, like the wizardess and, well, the dwarf is just sort of a jerk, but I like him that way. And uh, it's those characters that I think are actually the best because their voice acting is really solid and uh, their lines can actually be pretty funny sometimes. But even though this is very much a parody game, I don't want to focus on the humor too much because, like I said, humor is extremely subjective, so that sort of thing is going to be very much up to you. Although there is one thing that I do have to say that I actually do appreciate, in that a lot of the self-awareness that this game has is a little bit different from how an RPG normally does, like, the self-aware humor thing, and that it seems to be... It seems to think that it's a tabletop role-playing adventure rather than a video game. So that adds a little bit of flavor to the self-awareness by making it a little bit different than you might actually think. It doesn't constantly joke that it's a video game and it knows it's a video game. It seems to think that it's more of like a tabletop fantasy adventure that you're all playing together, which does, it, it adds a little bit. However, this is a very combat-heavy RPG, as in this game is entirely combat-focused. Normally, in CRPGs, you have a lot of different routes around your problems. You could pass various skill checks like diplomacy and thievery and intimidation and all sorts of things like that to solve your problems in various roundabout ways, only occasionally getting in combat when those things fail or you actually feel like it or you're forced into by like a bandit encounter or something. But uh, in this game, combat is your main modus operandi. It's the main way that you actually go through the world. There aren't really any like dialogue skill checks or anything like that. The uh, Like I said, the role-playing aspect kind of takes a backseat since all of the characters are established people with established personalities already, none of them are created by you. So instead of being about dialogue trees and skill checks, it's more about the sort of adventure of the collective party and all of the battles that you get yourselves into. 
Uh, luckily, for something that you're doing for the majority of the game, the combat in this game is actually pretty good. It uses a pretty standard turn-based, you know, chessboard style, uh, grid-based combat system. Uh, one of the strongest aspects of the combat is actually the arenas themselves, because you are going through some pretty fun environments, lots of like, well, the dungeon itself is really weird, it's almost like a Taurus trap, so you have a lot of very odd places to fight, like big bars and foundry-looking places and ice skating rinks. God Goblin ice skating rink specifically. So there's a good variety of actual arenas to do the fighting in. And uh, there's also a lot of, there's a heavy focus on movement and positioning. Now movement is always a big deal in a turn-based RPG like this because positioning your characters in the right way to flank enemies and not get flanked themselves is obviously important, but it's a little bit more important in this game because, well for one, the first thing that's a little bit odd is that uh, when you move to a square you actually have eight different facings, so that whenever you move you can move an arrow after you're done to face eight different directions on every square, and of course this determines things like backstab bonuses and, and flank penalties and things like that, so there's already a bit of extra positioning complexity there because of those eight facings on every tile. But there's also a lot of destructible terrain and things, stuff that acts as either partial or full cover, kind of in like an XCOM remake style. And uh, you can actually destroy a lot of stuff like crates and tables and things of that nature with spells or explosive attacks like bombs and some other things. And sometimes there are just like very large enemies that can barrel through stuff and destroy the area. And uh, suddenly that thing that used to be cover isn't anymore. There's also a lot of skills that move enemies and yourself around. You know, various charges that do more damage the longer they charge, or skills that push and pull enemies in various directions. And the game actually gives you an example in the tutorial of something that you should do as often as you can, because it's very powerful, it's definitely an effective strategy, which is to position a couple of your party members near an enemy, so that if that enemy were to leave their range, they would get attacks of opportunity against them. And then you use like a spell or a skill to push that enemy out of the range of each of those people, so they automatically get attacks of opportunity, and you get the damage of the attack that moved them, and the damage of both of the characters that were standing near them, they get those free extra attacks, and, and it all adds up to like a big combo. So movement in this game is very important. Each character is a specific class, by which I mean that's literally their name. They don't have individual names. They're named stuff like the Elf, the Ranger, the Wizardess, and so on. So everyone has their own specific roles already chosen for them. But one thing that I do really like is there's quite a lot of character development by, by way of like skill trees and stuff. Because if you're going to have characters that are already set classes, you should at least make those classes really customizable or have a lot of stuff that you can give them to make them more interesting, right? So in this case, they've actually done a really good job of that because not only do you have loot, and of course everyone can wear different kinds of loot and wield different sorts of weapons and rings and amulets with various magical effects and things like that that you can find, as well as uh, consumable items you can put on your belts, like the potions or throwing hens, which are exactly what they sound like, but uh, every time a character levels up, you actually have several different skill points that you can put into their stats, so you know, like strength and dexterity and all those things, so you do, even though they are set characters, you do get to individually level up their stats, which I do like, but the big thing is, uh, whenever you level up, up, every character gets one active and one passive skill point, and each character has two quite expansive skill trees, one passive and one active, that allows them to go through various tiers as they put more and more points into the tree and unlock further and further stuff, so there's a really good amount of stuff, just a lot of things that you can customize about these characters, which, like I said, is kind of necessary if we're going to have a CRPG where everyone's classes are already set in stone. You gotta make those classes have a good amount of variance and a lot of abilities and spells and skills and stuff, and they do actually do a good job of that. One thing I, I tend to like, this is a bit of a soapbox moment I guess, but I really like it when RPGs have a separate skill tree for active and for passive skills, because I feel like every time I've seen that, it makes the passive skills more powerful because they're sort of allowed to be stronger because they have their own dedicated tree. Instead of mixing in passives and actives on one tree, it seems like the passives are always a little bit more boring in that case. That might just be something that I've noticed and isn't actually true, but I do tend to appreciate it in games that uh, split the skill trees up, thus allowing both of them to be like more powerful and interesting instead of just like plus 5% crit or whatever. So, given that the combat is most of what you're going to be doing, it is nice that uh, the characters are as customizable and have as many abilities that all synergize with each other and stuff as well as they actually do. They've clearly put a lot of thought into the combat system of this game. Considering it's the thing that you're mostly doing, it makes sense that they have fleshed it out quite a bit and based most of the development and the, most of the gameplay loop around actually doing this combat. 
One thing that this game does that I've never actually noticed in any other game before is it's got like an anti-RNG element to it, which is sort of interesting. It's got this little, you see that purple meter on the bottom left of the screen? It's uh, the goddess Randomia. Basically what happens is every time something bad happens to you, like you get a critical failure on a roll, or one of your characters goes down, or just something like that happens, this gauge fills up. And uh, as it fills up through various thresholds, it's got four different abilities you can activate that cost different amounts of the gauge that give you a little bit of a benefit. So it's kind of like a way to turn your luck around. If you're getting a whole bunch of bad rolls, you have these other skills to fall back on. And they range from allowing the currently active character to have another action point. This game uses a two action point system like the XCOM remakes. That means you have like one movement and one action or two movement points per turn. Uh, so you can get a third point and do a second action per turn with this gauge. Or you can go all the way up to the very fourth button there, which is to heal everyone like 33% of their health and keep cure one injury on each person. And an injury is what happens if someone's health gets depleted and they go down and you're able to revive them. I should mention that in this game, every source of healing can revive, which is kind of odd from your basic healing spells to like the uh, ranger's first aid ability. And all of these things can actually revive someone that's downed as long as they have turns left. But if their turns completely run out, then they get the maximum three injuries instead of just one and uh, are severely injured until you're able to rest at an inn. However, this idea of uh, fighting back against the RNG with this gauge also comes with a bit of an, a double edge because in this game the RNG can really screw you over. Now bad dice rolls are things that happen all the time in CRPGs because they're they're based on dice rolls so obviously there will be bad luck sometimes and things will just miss or crits will happen that you didn't expect and it can really turn your luck around. However this game has one main mechanic that I'm really not sure about and that's the critical failure mechanic. Sometimes things just fail like badly and I don't really understand all the chances and the way it works because the game doesn't actually give you enough information to understand how this how this works. It, it doesn't tell you all the dice rolls that are going on under the hood. So when you target an enemy with an attack, it tells you the chance to hit. It doesn't tell you much about exactly how much damage it'll do. It just kind of gives you like a vague gauge, so you have to sort of guess. But there's also a critical failure chance on almost every single action, but the game doesn't tell you this. And critical failures are very bad. They could involve your character just falling over and being stunned for a turn or hurting themselves on accident and totally missing an enemy and they can involve all sorts of really negative things and there are even some enemies that actually enhance your critical failure chance make it even more likely but again this is never told to you and it is really frustrating to do very poorly on a combat encounter, not because you didn't use the right tactics or you didn't position yourselves properly or, or fight intelligently, but because you just got a bunch of random critical failures out of nowhere and just destroyed your own team on accident. It is very frustrating sometimes, and uh, I don't like the fact that the game doesn't really properly communicate all these chances to you, because if you're going to have chance-based systems like this, you got to tell the player what the chances are, or else it's not really risk-reward because they don't know how much they're risking in the first place. Uh, but aside from that, a bit of maybe an over-reliance on certain random elements, the combat is genuinely fun in this game. Uh, you know, it does get frustrating sometimes because random rolls can just really be against you for no reason all of a sudden, but it's usually not so egregious that it totally ruins combat or anything like that. Exploration is pretty fun in this game because there's a good amount of stuff to explore. The dungeon is really well realized. In fact, all in all, I think the art style of the game is really nice. You know, whether or not you appreciate the like silly characterization is up to you, but I do think that quality wise, it looks good. It's very colorful. The environments are nicely detailed. The actual animations for the enemies and for your characters all have a lot of charm to them. It's got very nice animations and this is compounded by the fact that there are a lot of enemy types in this game. There's like over a hundred different enemy varieties for you to fight, which is always good from a just a pure combat standpoint because it makes sure the combat doesn't get stale because there's always new stuff for you to learn and new things, new challenges for you to face. But it also means that that's a lot of animation work going into each of those enemies. So that's pretty impressive. I am definitely impressed overall with the visual style of this game. It looks nice. It's got a good, a good character, a good charm to it. But really the point is, overall, it's just a fun CRPG with some really fun character development because of the uh, pretty nice in-depth leveling system and a lot of good combat to do with a lot of enemy variety and arena variety to spice it up. So it does the CRPG thing pretty well. Whether or not the humor falls flat for you is going to be up to you, but uh, aside from the humor, I think it's a solid game. You know, it does everything that a good like dungeon crawling experience needs to do well enough to actually have a good time. So I'll link you below to the uh, Steam store page in the description below this video if you want to check it out. It is also just recently on Game Pass, so if you do have Game Pass, you can check it out there right now. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.